everybody, welcome to Off the Rack, the comic book review show where we take a comic book and break it down by its basic elements of art writing and story, tell you what we thought about it, and then we give you recommendations books coming out this week on Wednesday. We're your hosts, I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Let's get into it. We're talking about Batman number 24, written by Tom King, with art by Clay Mann and David Finch. Batman proposes to Catwoman. Spoilers! I ruined it for you! <laughs> ah, that's what happens in the book. Batman proposes to Catwoman, and also they take uh, Gotham Girl off the table, you know, because she gets fixed by the Psycho Pirate mask, and so she's gone. Because, like, this. now now we're releasing her like a sparrow into the DC universe. No, they're go, not. Go and be a character. No. Nope. And I'm sure there will be plenty of people who want to write about her. That's not what they're doing with her. Oh, no? No. It looks like they're just going, like, and if anyone wants to pick up, no, pick up Gotham like Girl. You're going to train. Yeah, go away for a while. And then if anyone wants to write about you, <sighs> they can have a Gotham Girl book. No. With the worst name. Gotham girl. And powers that will eventually kill you. And the more intense your adventures, the quicker you'll die. So, like Spawn. The first time I read it, I was like, ah. Then I read it again, I was like, you know what? This ain't too bad. I still don't know what to think about this. That's Tom King Batman for you. <laughs> and that's not good or bad. I just, like, I don't know. And I know, like... I, I know, because I know this, that, like, we're not going to get an answer to this anytime no. soon. Well, we'll get the answer probably to the question. How? In the next issue. The next issue is Jokes and Riddles, which is a... Is a... Uh, by the way, we predicted the War of Jokes and Riddles, which is arguably the worst name for an event I've ever heard in my life. Wait, uh, we, we did? We did. In an episode of Back Issues, I believe it was Batman R.I.P. at the end of it, we reference the idea of the Joker and Riddler fighting because they would never team up. There it is. I also, I don't know really what to make of it. I know that it was probably one of the stronger Tom King Batman books of the run out of the 24 issues I've read. It's probably in the top three best issues. Uh, That's not saying a ton, yeah. Not for me, anyway. But, uh, but the art was fantastic. We should get into that because that's really, I think, the star of the book. Yeah. Uh, two different styles. Two different styles, two different stories, all happening at the same, around the same time. Yeah, um, I like Clayman's Batman. He's bulkier, yeah. which is interesting. Like, that's, I'm not saying like he always has to be that, but like I thought that his interpretation was a little bit different. And his um, cowl reminded me a little more of Dark Knight. Yes. Oh, very much. The bulk, the color, and the cowl all scream Dark Knight to me. Which made me immediately like, oh. Oh, I enjoy this now. <laughs> yeah. No. I dug it. I love Clay Man's style, and I like uh, everything that was in there, aside from the fact that I think Gotham Girl's a waste of space. It wasn't you've duped me? <laughs> no, I wasn't du- Well, the, the art is like, I. Uh, it's not like I thought it was really well drawn, and then I thought about it some more, and it was really bad. No, I, li I liked how Clay Man draws Batman. And I like David Finch's art as well. Ben? Uh, the art was good. I mean, I don't have... I'm not the one to be talking about art. <laughs> That's fair. No, I liked it. You know what I really enjoyed about it, too, is it was two complete different styles. When you have multiple artists on a book, sometimes there's a winner, even yeah. if we don't necessarily want there to be one. And uh, sometimes they're, like, kind of jockeying for, like, who really, really drew the issue. Right. I think this was just very well handled. I, I, no one was really competing for my attention. No, I felt, though, that um, Finch's art was the clear standout, and I think that's only because it bookends it. Yeah. Like, his art begins and it ends, and that makes sense. He's the artist on who's on this book right now. Mm -hmm. He should, like, be still like, this is the main artist. And yes. the other person here is just helping out and doing some fun stuff there. And, I, and, I, and again, I just thought it was nicely done. Yeah, I agree. It's also not just one story and then the next. No, it's, it's interspersed. broken up a lot. So yeah. that did help. I agree. And it really looked, uh, it was well, it was well handled. Tom King, writing it, I think he wrote a well-constructed issue. Yeah, I think he did too. Um, I, I, you know, it was just, it was, it was interesting. Um, I still, because I've talked about this before, I still don't know if I agree with some of the things that he has decreed that Batman feels, thinks, and says. Nope, I agree as well. Um, but I, I don't know, because we have one issue of this, and I don't, think it's fair to judge it on that and mm. it, i'm gonna have to wait now yeah to complete my like analysis quote unquote air quotes um of this issue or of like the writing element to it because like i don't know like i don't know yeah i uh, have some very specific examples but i figure we'll talk about just our general 
Okay. He needs the writing first. Yeah, that was uh, it was well handled. I liked the dialogue surprisingly enough because that's one of the weakest things Tom King's capable of in a Batman yeah. book. Um, but I thought it was okay. The <laughs> Batman Catwoman interplay is for me horrible. I hate when Batman and Catwoman interact with each other when C Tom King's writing it because they have this like weird robotic non-human interaction mm. you know that they, they refer to each other as bat and cat the way they never have and it's just frustrating but uh it because he has done it consistently throughout the 24 issue run like it it works because he's already done it you see so it parallels itself like you it tricks your brain into thinking that it's like he set it up you know, or that it's consistent. But it's only consistent within his own narrative. See, he wrote it first, and then he called back to it again. That's... that's like, not oh, any... I've seen this. I've seen this before, and oh, look at that! No. But, when he was finally talking to Catwoman, and he loses the cowl, and he calls her Selina, and he's really talking to her... Yeah. That struck me, and I think... And that's why I reread it. When it got to that point, mm. and I was like, what's going on here? And then he proposes, and I thought it was a gimmick, but then I went back and I reread it. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've reread an issue <laughs> that we've done for Off the Rack. Nice. Because I realized that the entire time Gotham Girl is talking to him, she's talking about want and love and desires and, and really the truth of who she is and what she should do. Yeah. And then Batman suddenly takes that and is like, what do I really want? And even at the heart of it, he loves Selena, yeah, and he I buy wants that. to be with her. And I thought that was a powerful impact and a, and a cool message. Yeah. See now, yeah, but like, how many other characters have tried to get Batman to do that? Yeah, it's weird that Gotham Girl's the one to get to yeah. cut to, to. But it could be that maybe she's the final straw. I guess because I mean, like Alfred's tried. Alfred's been it. trying. I feel like Clark has tried. The it. Robins have tried. Uh, yeah. Many women have tried. Right, but it takes a creation of Tom King. Yeah. Like, that's where I was having a hard time with it, and especially when Bruce started talking about Alfred. He started talking about fear. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Right. It, I don't it's, know. It's, it's either brilliant or terrible. I can't, and I know... I it really, could be both. Yeah, and I, I think really it's brilliantly know. bad. I, I think for me it is, because, I like... on the fence. It's, it, is a, it is a gimmick, uh, a gimmick that they are playing up big time uh it's a big cliffhanger and uh you know uh, i mean i'm predicting now we're never gonna see the gimmick i doubt it i well, mean we've, knows, we've like... seen it in previous realities right. you know you go you throw a rock at any comic book news site and they were just like shitting themselves with articles and listicles about how many times bruce and selena wound up together or gotten married or how lived ha happily ever after it's like yeah that's fine but that's all in the past and they're doing this new thing now and you know right it's not the same and, and again, because we only have this issue to go off, and there's nothing else to it, but, like, this struck me as, he never talked to Alfred no. about it. No, he never will. He knows I mean, who he is. He, why would he? He doesn't listen to Alfred. <laughs> Alfred <laughs> would, doesn't it, give him advice. Even though he does, he just ignores it. Yep. Yeah, why would I listen horrible. to See, Yeah, why would I tell Alfred when I listen to him ever? Right, and, like, and <laughs> I did have, and again, because who knows where this is coming from. This is, like, coming out of left field. To complete left field. Right? Like, he has... The episode or the he has the thing that happened in the button, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. Like King doesn't reference that in this. No. He and like I don't know if that's the wake up call. Like it has nothing to do with Gotham Girl. She's just a sounding board. Yeah. And it has to do more with what happened in the button. We don't reference that. Right. We have seen King's Alfred like come to Bruce's aid, like put his himself in harm's way. Yes. For Bruce. You know, like, be incredibly, like, crestfallen when he thinks that, like, Bruce might die. Yeah. And then for Bruce to turn around and say this, I was like... That's weird. That's weird. It's that's weird. weird. That's, that's weird and really hurtful. Yes. Currently, Snyder's Alfred. Like, in All-Star Batman, Snyder is writing an Alfred... Yeah. ...who thinks that Bruce is a son, and I really enjoy that interpretation. Mm -hmm. Um, And Bruce is seemingly sort of responsive to that, even if he doesn't recognize that it's happening. Um... So, like, I, that, like, strikes me because I like that, and that has just happened. Yeah. And then to have this, I'm like... Yikes. I'm like, Dad! Separating the things that are... Because, like, that's maybe a continuity and maybe not. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Well, if you want it to be. I don't, I don't know if I do anymore. I don't know. You think Damien knows? Who gives a shit? You know what is funny? Like, to me, the bombshell is not him proposing to Catwoman. For me, it's him being like, I'm always afraid. Yeah. Like, that, I was like... 
What? Yeah, I'm constantly afraid. Like, I get it. I I'm get where crippled he, with fear. I get where he's going with it. Like, he's addressing the, like, fine line between Batman and his rogues gallery. Like, he's trying to, like, in, like examine that. Yeah. But then he goes another way with it. Right. And I'm like, well, are you just gonna leave that there? Yeah. Isn't it cool just gonna... that since I am Gotham, <clears throat> we have been dealing with this big theme of fear. And we can and, and, of course... That's a big element in Batman and mm -hmm. Gotham I mean, there's Girl. A, there's a character all about that. Yeah, Gotham and Gotham Girl are struck down by their fears at the culmination from I Am Gotham all the way to here. We get that journey, and Claire and Batman both face their fear together. Thank God that this integral rogue of Batman's was responsible for it. And of course, I'm thinking about Psycho Pirate. Oh, that is not where I thought you were going. No, with that. Oh, that weird. No Scarecrow. Huh. Let's use Psycho Pirate! <laughs> yeah, it's not even like a giant bat shows up. Nope! <laughs> no, it's... I mean, like, I get it, doing something. Doing a, cri a crisis thing, you gotta use Psycho Pirate. It's just like, you got a guy whose whole shtick is fear! Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> in I Am Bane, yes. is Scarecrow in there? No. Okay. Because it's really funny. I'm imagining him no, either... but the ventriloquist is no, there! No, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I'm imagining either that he is somewhere in Arkham, or he's not, and someone's like, Hey, did you hear about that whole thing? Yeah. That Psycho Pirate did with all the fear? He's like, are you kidding me? No, I'm really not, man. Like, he made these two, like, super-powered people completely terrified, and, like, one of them, like, ripped up a whole bunch of stuff and, like, took on the Justice League. Yeah. All with fear. That son of a yeah! bitch! <laughs> That's what they need to do. They need That's to... the last straw! <laughs> Uh, this is why no one takes you serious. <laughs> no, this is why I <laughs> should write comics. <laughs> they no, need I, to do... I was talking to the scarecrow. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I took it both ways. <laughs> so, uh, pick up Batman 24 if you want to know what the hell's going on. Uh, would you guys recommend this book? Uh, I feel like I'd recommend it after the next arc. Mm. Like, Yeah, because then you won't have to wait forever yeah. to find out what happens. Like, that's, it's just so weird. We're in such a bizarre place, because, like, now they left this, and I get it. It's that's a subject, perfect. It's a mystery. It's like, whatever. It's got you. Ooh, whatever. But it's like, you either, you either created a legitimate, like, oh my god, I can't wait for this to happen, or you have set up your next event to just be like, yeah, but all I want to know is what happened with this. Like, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to turn out. So they could just doom uh, the next arc. Yeah, jokes, jokes and, and riddles. riddles. It's, it's, so rem it's so memorable, that name. It's so great. I recommend it because otherwise you won't know like what's happening. You gotta you gotta buy it and read it and be like, oh. I'm just yeah. sticking with. It. Yeah, I, I mean like it's a begrudging recommend, but I say recommend. So we're all just gonna be calling the next arc like Batman Wojar. Wojar, yeah. <laughs> there you go, Wojar. We should all come up with a better title. <laughs> mm. Right right now. Nah. Oh. Uh -huh. That's too much time. We've already no. been talking forever. But uh, let's get into recommendations of books that are coming out this week. On Wednesday, you can pick up uh, Vina Like a Day. A day! A couple books coming out this week that I am excited for, but the one that I have to recommend is The Defenders Number 1, written by Bendis with art by David Marquez. You might be a little bit wary about this team because they wrote an unmentionable event about a year ago, but forget all that because Defenders, and that's cool because there's a show by that name starring all the people that are in there. You might want to call this book uh, Def uh, New Avengers 2.0, because that's what I'm looking at it as. It's literally just Bendis' favorite characters all on one team, and that's that's all I want to read. I want to read a comic by Bendis about characters that only Bendis cares about. Uh, that's when you get good Bendis. When you get not-so-great Bendis, you get things like Civil War 2. Uh, if you get, if you, but if you want good Bendis, you got to read something like Infamous Iron Man or probably this Defenders book, which I'm going to recommend. So check it out. It's going to be, uh, well, hopefully as good as you know his last run with those characters. So this week, regression number two, written by Cullen Bunn with art by uh, Danny Luckert and uh, Marie Anger. I guess one of those is artists, one of those is cover. This is look. This is the way they list these things. Um, will be coming out. I really enjoyed Cullen Bunn's first issue of Regression that 
talked about, like, this guy who has, um, like, waking daydream kind of things that are horrible and horrific, and literally he sees things all over the place. like, bugs crawling out of everything. Like, and when I say everything, I mean, like, your face. He sees that, and it's scary, and it involves um, some past life of his, and that's kind of been brought forward through, of course, hypnotherapy, hence the regression thing. So I can't wait to see where this scary story is going, because I like me a scary story. Um, speaking of other scary stories... Um, maybe it's my love of the Winnebago Man, um, you know, viral video, but Winnebago Graveyard number one of four is also coming out this week from Image with a story by Steve Niles. I haven't read a Steve Niles story in quite a while, so I'm looking forward to this. It's only a four-part uh, miniseries, which means, of course, you know me, I love the beginning, middle, and end, and I'm gonna get that from this. There's art by a whole bunch of people on this, so just check it out. I'm sure a bunch of them are covers and such. Um, it's about an American family traveling around in a Winnebago, of course, um, running into a small town with a sinister secret. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then one more thing. I just want to give a quick kind of shout out to um, something that's coming out that has already come out in the past, but they're redoing it over at Marvel. Um, Vision Director's Cut is coming out. Uh, it collects issues one through two, plus having extras like Tom King's original script pitch. Uh, script excerpts, character designs, all that stuff. So if you're a huge fan of the vision, you might want to go and grab this just, you know, for yourself as like a little collector's item or just to get a little more insight on the series. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of Off the Rack, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I am Sal. I'm Ben. I'm Tiffany. Thanks a lot for watching.